Hey, hey, today I'm going to be taking a look at the M4A3E2, better known as the Jumbo, the Sherman Jumbo, tier 6 medium tank that plays more like a light heavyweight tank, because it's got really badass armor. Compared to its little brother, the EZ8, it's got pff, way, way, way better armor. Stuff goes through this thing really pretty easy, but uh, this guy... Especially when you run it with the stock turret. Whew. It's bad. Alright. So, to get to the jumbo, you have to go through the M4, and then you get to branch choice between the EZ-8 and the Sherman Jumbo. If you don't go through the T1 Heavy, it's a good way to bypass the M6 if you don't want to drive it and go straight to the T29. So that is an option for you. But if you take the easy 8 route, you can go to the T20, and you can also go to the Jackson and avoid having to play any of these guys, like the Wolverine or the T40. So it's a bit of a choice, but it, what I ended up doing is I took the easy 8 first, and then I moved on to the T20 now. And the Sherman Jumbo, I just kind of went back and wanted to play just because I wanted to see what it was like. Also, so I could do a review. So... After you do the jumbo, you get the choice between the T20 and the T29, and both these tanks are quite good. This one has lots of armor, and that one has no armor. So if you want to go the armored route, you want to be going down to the, the heavy route. Looking at the hit points, pretty competitive. It's got... Well, my, my jumbo's got less because I'm running the stock turret because it has way better armor. Uh, if it was running the other turret, which looks like that, I would have 760, which is 10 more than the the EZ-8. It's fairly competitive with uh, other tier 6 tanks, like as far as hit points, like the T-3045 has got seem around that number, so not really too much different. But I'm going to remove it back to how I like to play it. So this tank weighs about 35 tons, got a fairly decent engine in it, you have three engine choices in this. And the nice thing about this tank is it shares a lot of the engines with everything else. Uh, when I got to this tank, I really only needed to get the tracks. And I had all the guns done because I'd already done the M1A2 with the T1 Heavy, or it was the M6. And I also had already done most of the stuff with the EZ8 as well. So if you do the EZ8 and the T1 Heavy and the M6, the jumbo is really easy to unlock, have everything unlocked except for the tracks, basically. And the derp gun, I think, is a direct uh, same gun as that's on the M4. So the the biggest difference between this and the EZ8, which is the easiest tank to kind of contrast it with, because it looks very similar, but it uh, it's not anywhere near as fast as the EZ8. The EZ8 goes like almost 50, traverses at 40. This thing does about 35 at best, pretty slow uphill, and traverses at about 32, which is not bad. If you play your cards right, you can turn your turret and your hull fast enough to not get circled too badly by anything that's really fast. So your hull armor is 101 in the front, 76 and 38 in the back. If you can get your tank looking like about that, you can bounce a whole hell of a lot of stuff. This thing is really bouncy, especially down here. You, if you're going to be shooting at this thing, don't shoot here. Maybe shoot there if you're going to shoot at anything. I think the best places to probably shoot this guy are this ridge up on here in the turret, maybe. Uh, up here, and then the cupola hatch. Possibly in this bottom part of here. Uh, this isn't super flush. I don't know if, if that might be a different, a better place to shoot than the gun matlet, because that thing is looks like it's about 14 feet thick. So I would never shoot there. <laughs> Stuff will bounce off that all day because that has 152 armor all the way around. So this turret, you you can run, you can kind of run this tank in a couple different configurations, and I'll go after that after. So armor on this guy is fantastic, except for if you get it like this. Uh, just about everything pretty much will go through the side pretty easy, and the back is pretty wide open as well. So. You want to really, really make an effort to keep this thing armor forward. If you run into one tank, just try and keep reverse turning until you can keep it to the front, and you'll have no problems. Unless it's maybe a tier 8 tank, but then you're probably dead anyway. So, 
looking at the, the guns and the turret options for you. You can run this tank with the upgraded turret, which really, I don't know if it counts as much of an upgrade because it just gets worse. And then you can run it with the same gun that the EZ-8 gets. But it kind of depends how you want to play the tank. You could play it as like a non-mobile sniper tank with really good armor that can poke and has really good gun depression. Because when you put this thing over a ridge, everything will bounce off the front of this. And you, if you run it with the... With this turret, well, you're going to bounce some stuff, but it's not as strong, definitely not as strong as the base turret. So you can run it like this, and you'll get the same 128 uh, penetration, little piddly damage, 115, and 18 rounds a minute. Or you can switch it back to the derp gun, the little short-barreled one, and then drop the turret back down. And suddenly, you've got a whole different configuration where you've got a whole ton of armor all the way around and tons of armor in the front. And then you can run it with this gun, which is the 105, and the same one that's on the M4. Got 7.5 rounds per minute. Crap penetration, really great damage. And from my experimentation with this stuff, I this tank is a lot more fun to play with the derp gun. It's a little bit... I would... I wouldn't run the EZ-8 with with uh, with this gun, but with the the jumbo, I think this is the better option. I have a couple of replays where I'm I'm running it with both, so you can kind of see the contrast. But uh, this thing's great. Between when you shoot guys, you're almost guaranteed to do some amount of damage most of the time. Um, I found it'll do like on a low roll about 130, on a great roll like over 300 and something. So. Like you can one-shot a lot of tier 5 tanks, especially the tank destroyers, like the SU-85 and the Stug and stuff. So it's kind of a couple ways you can run it. You just want to avoid the the base gun and this gun, if you can help it. Get through them as quick as you can and get either this gun or the 105. Looking at what I've got for rounds, I've got... Actually, let's go back to stats. Uh... 32 Church Verse isn't bad. You're not going to be caught out too bad in this tank. 330 view range is pretty awful. You'll get better view range with the other tank, but uh, with the other turret, I mean. But that really doesn't matter because you're not going to hit anything hardly from range anyway because your dirt gun's got like 0.55 accuracy and it sucks. So your last thing is your radio. This thing only gets two radios and 615 radio range is, is decent. It's nothing to write home about. Ammo-wise, I take about 40 HE rounds and 15 heat rounds. I don't exclusively run this thing around with heat because it's really, really expensive. And I don't really find you need it unless you run into, like, I don't know, like an IS-3 or something. But then you got spaced armor and heat rounds don't work as good. So you got to be kind of selective on what ammo you're choosing and what you're shooting at with this tank. You want to be smart. I've taken a medium caliber tank gun rammer for load times, gun lane drive for aim times, and I haven't fully committed to... I don't know whether I'm going to keep both the EZ-8 and the Sherman Jumbo. I kind of like them both because they play so differently, but their other option would be to take a vertical stabilizer with this thing, but <clears throat> I don't know. I'm not sure if I want to drop another half mil on, <laughs> on modules for the Jumbo, but if I was to take something else, it would probably be the vertical stabilizer because I have enough repair on my crew here to to get by not too bad. So, all my crew's at 100%, and I took repairs, except for clutch braking, because I want to turn faster, and then I'll take repairs after on that, and then I'll take 6 cents, probably, as my second skill on my commander, and gunner. Gunner will probably be smooth ride. Uh, not smooth ride, but uh, snapshot, so I can get better accuracy during turret rotation. And then I'd probably take repairs on this radio operator. I don't know. Situational awareness would be firefighting. And then on the loader. Yeah, loader gets crap skills. I'd probably just take something like firefighting or maybe you get brothers in arms or something. So there's a lot of different options that you can do in your crew. And I'd take basic loadout for uh, this stuff because you occasionally get 
ammo racked or set on fire and, or your crew members. Actually, I haven't had too many instances of this tank um, getting its its crew killed because the armor is so good. I've gone through a number of battles where I don't even take any damage at all. So this tank is pretty good for that. And now I'm going to load into a couple of replays. One of them is going to be with the, the M1A2. The 76 millimeter, and the other one was is going to be with the 105 duck gun. So here we go. Okay, we're on the North American map here. This is what docks, docks or port? <laughs> I call it docks because it looks more like a dockyard. Anyway, I am very, very, very top tier. There's only two tier six tanks per team per game here, and. The other team has a Cromwell and a VK3001P, and it's me and a Hellcat on our team. So, just rolling with the Jumbo. Jumbo, 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 Mumbo, Jumbo. From my experience, if you lose this dirt patch over here, this can get really, really bad. Like, especially if the other team rushes down into here. you got to really be careful of that on this map. So I'm going to roll my way all the way over into here. And I can kind of get away with rolling around by myself because there's not a lot here that I'm too afraid of. Unless I get medium zerged, but that's probably not going to happen. So I'm going to roll around through here. And this guy just thinks he's going to roll into our base. So aim him up. But I shot half a second too late and he died. <laughs> Which is too bad. And what do we have here? It looks like an M4. And we got the, about the same gun. So there was a first shot in. That was 137. We have the same gun and he does uh, about 80. Cool. So m 4 is dead, and I'd like to have my driver for this battle because this tank is slow as it is. I don't need to have him dead the whole time. So that shot, he was probably heat rounding me. Um, I'd be surprised. I don't know how that shot would have went in otherwise. Hit. All right, spotted Matilda, put one into him. See a T1 heavy. Can't not shoot at him. I mean. Even with how big the reticle is, he pretty much fits inside it because he's so huge. So I'm just seeing what I got shots on here. There's an AT2 and a Churchill. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to obliterate the Matilda. You can see that there's a medium tank up on the, the bridge there, but I'm just going to ignore him for now. That ridge kind of obscured my shot, so... See that Matilda's flanked me, but he's getting flanked again. Or he's getting engaged by the Panzer 38, so not looking too bad. So right now, I'm going to go over and I'm going to flank the AT-2, but... I can see that the Crusader has decided to come over and try and fight me. But he wisely backs off. And hopefully he'll back off long enough that I can get over this ridge and then I won't get shot at. And that shot bounced. So put that shot in there. So that was very close range and I took some shots in the back from that Crusader there but I think the AT-2 is more of a threat to our team than the Crusader is. So... I do eventually want to pay him back for him shooting me. And hopefully he will oblige me here. And I don't know where that shot went. That kind of sucked. And that was a mega roll! That was 384 damage. So we're looking pretty okay here. Their VKs racked up five kills, which ain't bad. And he's over on the other side, 
So, but I spot their their Matilda, and I aim him down. It was yellow on my crosshair there, but the H E M O was enough to take him out. So here, the last spotted area where the the V K was is over on the left side of the map here. So I'm gonna head over this way. But to speed this up, he decides to completely run away. <laughs> I thought he was maybe hiding over in the buildings over here, wanting to fight it out. But uh, he ran all the way back to the base. So I get over here, and the T-34 is nicely telling me, like, I should get a, a Top Gun here. But um, I just assumed the Churchill and the Hetzer are going to nuke that guy. But it didn't happen. So I drove over here all, for, all the way from nothing. And then I had to drive over here. They got him all the way down to 7%. And seemingly the Churchill was just going to let me have this one. Well, I wasn't necessarily have it. Like, I could still die here because he's got a decent gun. Actually, I don't know what gun he has. That doesn't even look like the short 88. We didn't penetrate their armor. So that didn't penetrate, so I switched to heat rounds. I bounce that shot, and here we go. That one was nice and flush. So, yeah, that looked like that looked like heat something or other because it's a really small hole. <laughs> yeah, so that was my battle. I had one of the battles I had with my the 105 derp gun. Ended up getting a top gun out of it. It didn't do crap ton of damage. I think it was only about 1400, 1600 damage, something like that. But uh, Managed to bounce a few shots. I took some stupid shots from the Crusader because I wanted to kill the AT2 in the back. But other than that, this tank worked out pretty good. I mean, my driver did die, but I think that's because the the M4 was heating it up. I don't use heat rounds in this thing unless I really, really need to secure someone. Or I really don't think I can get through their armor at all, ever. But, uh, yeah. Let's go on to one with the, the regular gun. Okay, this is a battle I had with one of the guys I play with, uh, Jay Holly Lion. He's over on his Hellcat on the other flank. And uh, I've gone up north because this is the best place for the for a derp gunny tank to go other than into the town. So I thought those guys might come around the corner, but it doesn't look like they're gonna they're gonna oblige me here. So it's an M4 and a Panzer IV. And I'm gonna try and get up here. That T-34 is hell-bent on staying there and getting blasted. I'm pretty sure they're both derping it up over there. So I come around the corner. And he heat derps me. <laughs> I'm not going to heat him. Screw that. And that was a critical hit. I'm not sure how much damage that did, but I had to repair my gun there. Not the most effective engagement for me, so I switched to heat rounds on this because I don't need to get killed by the, the KV-2. And that one bounced off his turret, which kind of sucked. I thought that was going to go in. Unfortunately, line's dead now. Hellcat ran out of lines. That one didn't go through. And the KV-2 bounces my heat shell. Damn it! <laughs> So, kind of kill steal there. <laughs> I wish I could have done a little bit more damage, but my shots just weren't going in for whatever reason. Enemy armor is destroyed. Oh, put one into him, take him out. This gun is pretty much perfectly made for shooting at Panzer IVs. You don't need to shoot with heat rounds at Panzer IVs at all. I try not to do heat rounds unless I really, really need to, but even then you're not really guaranteed to penetrate. So... And there's all those rules for what heat's good at penetrating, whether it, uh, it like sloped armor or not sloped armor, that kind of junk. So I don't really have too much support here. It's really just me. And there's a Hellcat to, into the left, but 
I think he's running away from me. So there's no way I'm going to catch him. Which means there's no point in chasing him. So I'll let the KV-1S deal with him. He should be able to take him out. So I'm going to wreck some of these Korean houses. Maybe they're North Koreans. Not that I don't like North Koreans, but... Canada was fighting North Koreans in the Korean War. So, spot this poor little SU-85B. Ammo! Yeah, not a good day for him. And what is this? Ah, uh, Jackson. <laughs> 331 damage. Bam! Alright, so there's an AT-2 here. And I'm going to aim at his gun, because that's a weak spot for him. And that didn't penetrate, which kind of sucks. So, I'm just going to drive right at him. And try and flank him. We didn't even scratch them. I was hoping with, with my penetration I'd be able to penetrate the side of the AT-2, but it didn't work out very well. So that one got eight by tracks. <laughs> I, was, I, I mean, I could have shot his, his Capola and stuff, but I wanted to see what was going on with this tank and what I could do with it. So we got shot pretty bad by something pretty big there. And even the back of that didn't work, so I started shooting. I was like, okay, I'm going to aim at the back and the bottom. There won't be any armor there. So that ended up working. Wow, I got like mega blasted in my gun mantlet. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that scrape mark across the front of my tank. What the hell was that? <laughs> Right. I got shot in the side there. I think that was from the SU. But, uh, yeah, my team ended up capping that map out because we couldn't have killed the TOG 2 with, like, eight tanks. So, won that game, got five kills. Probably should have been a little bit higher than that. I'm still getting a little... This is only, like, my fifth game using the derp gun, so I'm kind of getting used to how it plays, how it plays differently from the, the M1A2. So the next replay will be the one with the M1A2, and you can see how it contrasts this gun. But that was a pretty good battle. I didn't do, I probably only did about a thousand damage in that fight, but uh, I managed to kill Steel enough to get five kills. Ha! Okay, this is the fight I was talking about where I used the M1A2, the 76 millimeter gun, and I am pretty much lone wolfing it on gonna hold the whole side of this map by myself Enemy apparently. So spot an A20. Enemy armor is hit. Start blasting him. <laughs> the ELC like drove into the back of me, shoots me, didn't do any damage, didn't penetrate. So I just drove backwards, rotated my turret around. Penetration. And started executing. So you can see the M7's driven around there. And I missed that shot. And I can't go into into sniper mode because this is an 8.7 replay and it is half broken. So you only Enemy get three quarter view. Penetration. So easily penetrate tier 5 M7. Enemy now it's time to get revenge on the ELZ. If I could hit the little bastard. Cool. So pumping shells in there. Got the west flank secured. Time to move up. And this tank's slow. It's time to speed it up. M5 Stewart decided to drive middle of the map. Shot him too. And we spotted a tier 5 M4. And he completely is ignoring me at his peril. So I drive up, aim him down, and for some reason he just decided to sit here. He just fixated, so I wanted to finish him off. And he was, he was derping it up, but he missed. And then he gave me a side, and that was just like, you're about to be executed, buddy. So now getting shots at the Cromwell on his side because he was engaging RM4. 
I missed the last shot auto, unfortunately. And there's no way I'm going to catch him. I am not the fast medium you think I am. I am the E2, not the E8. But he couldn't handle the Panzer III. He got blown up. Panzer III. Totally OP. Oh no! Oh no! Uh oh. My target reticle is like off the middle of nowhere because of that. Oh no! Okay, now I'm, I, that I have my camera working properly again, you can see what I'm aiming at, and the camera won't get stuck in the middle of rocks and trains like it was. You don't, you don't get to see that though. I actually reshot half of this video for you. So what you're going to see here is the Excelsior taking a dive after our VK down the side of the hill. <laughs> Not sure that was his best plan of attack. And I'm not sure why these guys are capping. So spot an M4. Ricochet. Obviously it should ricochet off the side of an M4. M1A1 is not maybe the strongest uh, gun for this tank. It... Uh, uh, yeah, I can't recommend it. If I was going to go with with a gun for this tank, it would ha probably have to be the derp gun with the stock turret. So looking at this tank compared to how it compares against other tier 7 medium tanks, is it doesn't even play like a medium tank, really. It kind of plays like a... It's about as fast as a KV-1S. It has really, really, really good frontal armor, especially when you angle it. It has fantastic gun depression. The, the derp gun is kind of hit and miss sometimes. You got to... Be careful which ammo you shoot, but it's definitely the gun of choice. You, the, the other tier sixes you're gonna want to consider maybe the T3485. It, it's probably more of a medium tank than this tank is, and it has a really good gun. It's also more, a lot more mobile. Uh, the EZ8 is not another bad. It's another pretty good choice, but it, it can plays completely differently than this. Uh, there's not a lot medium-wise to really compare this tank to. It feels more like a, like a Churchill driving around just because of how big it is. Well, it's not big, but it feels big because of how slow it is. So if you're looking for a medium tank that plays like a medium that's fast and and uh, is really maneuverable and, and things like that, like you'd, this is not uh, the tank for you, you probably want to end up going with something more along, along the lines of an EZ-8 or a T-3485. Or maybe the Type 58, which is basically a T3485. And German Tier 6 stuff, the, the VK is a heavy tank now, but it kind of feels like this. Um, your other options are the VK 3002M, the new Baby Panther. That one, again, it, it it's a little bit more sluggish like this, but it, it's more of a sniper tank. It... It has uh, the L70 gun, so you're going to get good accuracy. Not so great alpha damage, but good penetration. The M1A2 doesn't have very good penetration at 128 for Tier 6. You're going to struggle against Tier 8 tanks mightily. So you might as well go with the derp gun, load up your heat rounds when you run into the really heavy stuff that you you won't have a chance with, really, with the M1A2 anyway. Well, you could load premium rounds with that gun, but yeah, you're going to do such little damage that it yeah, unless you get side shots, you're not really going to do much. So, all in all, this this tank's a bit of a an oddball for tier six uh, as far as it being a medium tank. <laughs> I almost think it should be a heavy tank, but it doesn't really have heavy tank guns. So, would I recommend it? Oh yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I'm glad I actually uh, I didn't just bypass it because you I could have, but. I came back and I played it, and I enjoy playing it a lot more with the derp gun. And that's about going to wrap it up. I mean, gun depression is fantastic. It has a lot of the same attributes as uh, the EZ-8 when it comes to that sort of stuff. So, if you liked the video, I'm going to be doing some more. And you can hit the subscribe button if you want to see some more of those. 
and hit like. It would really help me out. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.